Hi, fifth graders, and welcome back to chapter two. Today we are working with lesson 2.6, divide by two digit divisors. The standard we are working with for this lesson is number and operations in base 10, 5.6. The standard states, I can divide up to four digit dividends by two digit divisors to find a quotient. I can illustrate and explain by using equations, rectangular arrays, and or area models. So we are going to again check our work. So this is where we are using an equation to check to make sure our answer is correct. If you recall the steps to divide, we use the saying, does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers? So step one, divide. See how many times the divisor can go into the first digit of the dividend. Step two, multiply. Multiply the divisor by the number of times it goes into the first digit of the dividend. Step three, subtract. Subtract the product from the dividend. Step four, compare or check. Make sure your difference is smaller than the divisor. And step five, bring down the next digit if there is a, uh, another digit in the dividend to uh, continue on and then start the steps over. If you recall from lesson 2.2, we did have to check our answers. And how to check, we would take the quotient times the divisor, and that would equal the dividend. Or if there was a remainder, we would take the quotient times the divisor, then add the remainder on to that answer, and that should also give us our dividend. And if you cannot remember, uh, the division problem, the dividend is on the inside of the division bar, the divisor is the number outside of the division bar, and the quotient is the answer to our division problem. So now working on page 119, our essential question, how can you divide by two digit divisors? So under unlock the problem, this question says, Mr. Yates owns a smoothie shop. To mix a bas batch of his famous orange smoothies, he uses 18 ounces of freshly squeezed orange juice. Each day he squeezes 560 ounces of fresh orange juice. How many batches of orange smoothies can Mr. Yates make in a day? So we need to find how many batches of orange smoothies Mr. Yates can make in a day. And the numbers that I need to use is I know he squeezes 560 ounces of fresh orange juice and that he uses 18 ounces of freshly squeezed orange juice uh, for one batch. Now, I am not going to worry about estimating. Uh, we're going to skip that part and move on to step one. So to place the first digit in the quotient, I know that because I have a double digit divisor, 18, 18 cannot go into the five uh, in the, the first digit in my dividend. So I'm going to place my X. And then I do know that 18 is smaller than 56. So I do know that my very first digit would go above the six and the six is located in the tens place. So I know my answer will start in the tens place. So now to complete the division steps, they did figure out that 18 goes into 56 three times. So they did 56 divided by 18. So then we have to multiply the 18, the divisor, times the three. And they did place uh, that it was 54. So now we have to uh, subtract and we have 56 minus 54. And when we subtract, we notice that there are two left over. And to compare or check, I do know that two is smaller than my 18. So I can bring my next digit down. So they did that for us. They brought down the zero beside the two. We are now taking 20 divided by 18. And I do know that 18 can only go into 20 one time without going over. So I'm going to multiply 18 times one. Now when I subtract 20 minus 18 does give me two. So now I need to check or compare. The two is smaller than my 18. So I have a final answer of 31 remainder two. Now, because the uh, question is asking up at the top, how many batches of orange smoothies can he make in one day? We know that it's actually only 31 batches of orange juice 
or of orange smoothies that he can make. We do drop the remainder for this one. And we'll talk more about that on lesson 2.7 where we're interpreting our remainders. Moving on to the next page, on page 120, my next example says, every Wednesday, Mr. Yates orders fruit. He has set aside $1,250 to purchase Valetian oranges. Each box of Valetian oranges costs $41. How many boxes of Valetian oranges can Mr. Yates purchase? So we are going to take the total amount of money that Mr. Yates has and we're gonna divide it by the cost of one box, which is $41. So again, I am not going to estimate. And I do know that because I'm dividing by 41, I have to see, can 41 go into one that's in the thousands place? And it cannot. And then I have to check, can 41 go into 12? And again, 41 is larger than 12, so I'm placing in a, a second X. Now I'm trying to figure out how many times 41 can go into 125. So when I multiply 41 times, and there are times where you're just going to have to guess and check, obviously they did give us the number of times, um, but I know by guessing and checking, if I would take four and round that to 40, um, I would see that 40 times three is 120. So I know that three is what I would have tried first. So now I'm going to do 41 times three, which is 123. I'm going to subtract, and I would have two left over. I'm going to compare or check. Two is smaller than my 41. So then I can bring down my next digit. And then start my steps over. So now I'm doing 20 divided by 41. I know that 41 cannot go into 20, so that is where they get this zero for the ones digit in my answer. And then 41 times zero is obviously zero. So 20 minus zero leaves me with 20. And I now have the answer 30 remainder 20. So that does tell me that he can order 30 boxes of oranges, and then he would have $20 left over. Now to check to make sure we did do our, um, our division correctly, we are going to multiply the quotient times the divisor. So uh, they did set it up as 30 times 41. If you would choose to write the divisor first because it is a larger number than the quotient, that is perfectly fine. The commutative property says we can do that. But I know that I'm now going to take one times zero, which is this zero right here and then one times three, which gives me the three in the first partial product. To move on to the second partial product, they crossed off the one that we've already multiplied by. They dropped this zero, and then they multiplied the four out to the 30. So four times zero is zero, four times three is 12. So now we need to add those two partial products together. So zero plus zero is zero, three plus zero is three, bring down the two and then bring down the one. Now we did have a remainder of 20, so we are going to have to write that product and add the 20 onto it because that was our remainder. And when you add that together, you do notice that you do get the final answer of 1,250, which is the exact same as our dividend over in our original division problem. So we did do the division correctly. Under the try this, we are going to divide and then we are going to check our answer to make sure we are checking that or solving them correctly. So when I first start out, I do notice that 63 cannot go into seven. It is obviously much larger than seven, so I'm placing an X. And I do know that 63 can go into 75. So that means my answer will be starting with the tens place. And 63 can only go into 75 one time. If we would go up more, that would give us too large of a number. So 63 times one is 63. 75 minus 63, we would have 12. And then obviously 12 is much smaller than my 63, so I can bring down my last digit. And I have to now check how many times 63 can go into 126. So if you do not know this, 
Um, I would guess and check, but you should be able to recognize that if you would take round the 63 down to 60, 60 times two is 120. So if you would take 63 times two, that actually does give us the 126 that we need. So subtract and that leaves us with zero. So now to check our work, again, because the divisor is much larger than my quotient, I'm going to list the divisor first. So I'm going to take 63 times 12, two times three is six, two times six is 12. I'm going to cross off my two and drop a zero. One times three is three, one times six is six. Add that together and six plus zero is six, two plus three is five, and one plus six is seven. So I do have the dividend of 756, so my work does check out. Moving on to B, I have 4,692 divided by 22. And when I go to place my first digit, I know that 22 cannot go into four, so I'm placing the X above the thousand spot. And I do know that 22 can go into 46, so I know my answer will be the hundreds location for my very first digit. So now to check to see how many times 22 can go into 46, I know that I can go into it twice because 22 times two is 44. Subtract six minus four is two, and then four minus four is zero. You don't have to place the zero. Two is much smaller than 22, so I can bring down my next digit, which is a nine. Now two can go into 29 only one time in the tens location. 22 times one is 22. Subtract 29 minus 22 is seven. Seven is smaller than 22, so I'm gonna bring down my last digit, which is a two. Now 22 can go into 72 three times. And when I multiply 22 times three does give me 66. I need to subtract. So 72 minus 66 is six. Again, make sure you borrow. If you uh, need to show the borrowing, you would have 12 minus six um, after you borrowed one from the seven. So I would have 213 remainder six for my final answer. Now I am going to check this work again. So I'm gonna take my quotient, which is 213 times my divisor, which is 22. So two times three is six, two times one is two, and two times two is four. Cross off the two that's in the ones location of the second factor and drop a zero. Again, two times three is six, two times one is two, and two times two is four. Add those two partial products together. We have six plus zero, which is six. Two plus six is eight. Four plus two is six. And bring down the four. Because we have a remainder, we have to add that remainder of six on. So six plus six is 12, carry my one. One plus eight is nine. Bring down the six and bring down the four. So my, uh, Final answer, 4,692 does match my dividend from the original division problem. So now moving on to the next page, under the share and show. For number one, again, I have to figure out how many times 28 can go into six. Obviously it cannot, so I'm going to place an X above my six. And then I now have to figure out how many times 28 can go into 62. So if you need help figuring out what to guess and check, I would actually round 28 up to 30 so that way you don't guess up too high. So then I would say 30 times two gives me 60. So I know when I do my guess and check, I'm going to want to start with 28 times two. So that way I'm not guessing too high. Again, if you need to show work off to the side, that is perfectly fine, so that way you can check your work. So I know two times eight is 16, carry my one. Two times two is four plus one is five. Now, if I would guess 
uh, 28 times 3, I can already tell that that would give me uh, 2 high. It would be larger than 52, so I am going to stick with my 28 times 2. So now 62 minus 56. Again, don't forget to borrow. That would leave me with 6. I know that 28 is much larger than 6, so I can drop my 0. And now starting over, I have 60 divided by 28. So again, because we've just done this, we see that 28 can go into 60 twice, which is 56. And 60 minus 56 is 4. So 22 remainder 4 is your answer. Now if you wanted to make sure that you have, have this done correctly, I would do 28 times 22. And then once you have that answer, add 4 onto that and that should give you your dividend. I'm not going to take the time to do every single one of these, so that way uh, you can get started with your homework. So my next problem for question number two, I have 842 divided by 64. I know that 64 cannot go into eight, but 64 can go into 84. And if I would uh, guess and check, I would take 60 times two, which is 120, so I know that 64 times 2 would be uh, way too many times. So I'm going to stick with only one time. And my 1 is supposed to be above the 4, but it, because of my board and how small it is, it's a little difficult to do that. So my first digit is in the tens place. And I do know that 64 times 1 is 64. When I subtract, I am left with 20. And obviously 20 is still smaller than 64, so I can bring down my next digit. So now I have to figure out 64 times what gives me close to 202. Now, again, I would round the 64 down to 60, and I'm going to try a number that um, would be close to the 202. And I know that 60 times 3 is 180. So that's what I would guess and check first. So I'm going to do 64 times 3, and I'm going to see if that gets me close to 202 or if it's too much. So 3 times 4 is 12, bring down the 2, carry the 1. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 1 is 19. So I can definitely tell that if I would do 64 times 4, that would be too high. So it is going to be 3 times, and I'm going to take 202 minus 192. So when I subtract, 2 minus 2 is 0, and 20 minus 19 is 1, so I have a remainder of 10. So 13 remainder 10 is your answer. To check it, we would solve 64 times 13, and then add 10 on to get your dividend. For question number three, I have 2,340 divided by 53. I know that 53 cannot go into 2. It cannot go into 23. So now I'm going to figure out how many times 53 can go into 234. So to guess and check what I want to start with, I would round 53 down to 50. And then I would figure out 50 times what gives me close to 234. So I know if I would do 50 times 4, that would give me 200. Um, and then 50 times 5 would give me 225. So I'm actually going to start with 4 because I did round my 53 down. And I have a feeling that if I would do 53 times 5, it would be too much. So 53 times 4. I would have 4 times 3 is 12. Carry my 1. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21. Now, if you really wanted to double check to make sure that that is high enough, you could do 53 times 5, just to verify. 5 times 3 is 15, carry my 1. 5 times 5 is 25, plus 1 is 26. So again, I did verify that's 265, so that is too high, so it is only 4 times. So now I'm going to subtract my 234 minus 212. So 4 minus 2 is 2, 3 minus 1 is 2, and then obviously 2 minus 2 is 0. 
22 is smaller than 53, so I'm going to bring down the next digit. And now I'm going to take 220 divided by 53. So again, looking at the work that I did to try and guess and check, the four times again is how close I will be able to get to that 220. So 220 minus 212. So I'm going to look at this as 20 minus 12. If you need to borrow, you would obviously have um, 10 minus two after you borrowed. And that leaves me with eight. And so my final answer is 44 remainder eight. Again, to double check and make sure that you do have the correct answer, you would take 53 times 44 and then add your remainder on, which was eight, and that should give you your dividend. So if you would like to pause it right here, you can and work on questions four, five, and six on your own. And then you can double check your answers with mine or just do the check to make sure that your quotient times your divisor plus your, your remainder equals your dividend. So for question number four, you would have set it up with your 723 inside, your 31 outside. 31 goes into 72, or it cannot go into seven, sorry. Uh, but it does go into 72 two times, and 31 times 2 is 62. Subtract, that leaves you with 10. Bring down your next number. 31 can go into 103 three times, and that would be 93. When you subtract, that would leave you with 10 again. So you would have the answer of 23 remainder 10. For question number five, you're setting it up with 1,359 divided by 45. 45 cannot go into one or 13, but it can go into 135 three times. So when I multiply 145 times three, that does give me my 135. Subtract, that leaves me with zero. Bring down the nine. Obviously 45 cannot go into nine, so I have to make sure I place a zero in the one spot to keep the three in the tens. 45 times zero is zero. Subtract nine minus zero is nine. So I have 30 remainder nine. And finally, for my last question, I would have 7,925 inside the division bar, 72 on the outside. 72 cannot go into seven, but it can go into 79 one time, which is in my hundred spot. 79 minus 72 leaves me with seven. Drop down the two. 72 goes into 72 once. 72 times one is 72. Subtract, that leaves me with zero. Bring down my last digit. 72 cannot go into five, so I'm going to place a zero in the ones location to keep my answer in the hundreds. 72 times zero is zero. Five minus zero is five. So 110 remainder five is our final answer. So now for our homework. Our homework can be found on page 123 in our textbook. Oh, I went too far, sorry. On page 123 in our textbooks, you are going to be doing the even problems only. So question number two, four, six, eight, and 10. Obviously for the first four problems you will solve, uh, make sure you have them set up as the long division method for numbers two and four, and then just divide. Question number 10, it says one bag holds 12 bolts. Several bags filled with bolts are packaged into a, packed in a box and shipped to the factory. The box contains a total of 2,760 bolts. How many bags of bolts are in the box? So we have to take the total number of bolts, which was our 2,760, and we need to divide it by the number in one bag, which was 12. 
and that will give you your answer for the number of bags. On the next page, page 124, uh, we are going to skip question number four. So if you want to cross off question number four, so that way you don't do it, um, because it is not in Schoology, it will not give you a choice to enter in that answer. Up at the lesson check number one, a bakery packages 868 muffins into 31 boxes. The same number of muffins are put into each box. How many muffins are in each box? So you're taking your total number of muffins and divide it by your number of boxes to figure out your number of muffins in one box. Number two, Maggie orders 19 identical gift boxes. The ship shape packaging company packs and ships the boxes for $1,292. How much does it cost to pack and ship each box? So we're going to take the total cost and divide it by the number of gift boxes. Moving on to our spiral review, question number three, you may want to use your uh, place value chart because you are placing the correct digits for the standard form um, for that number that is written in word form. Like I said, you're skipping question number four. Moving on to question number five. In two days, Gretchen drinks seven 16 ounce bottles of water. She drinks the water in four equal servings. How many ounces of water does Gretchen drink in each serving? So we need to figure out how many total ounces she drinks first of all. So you're going to need to take 16 times seven because she's drinking seven bottles and each bottle has 16 ounces. Once you figure out that answer, you are going to set it up as a long division problem and place your product inside as your dividend and then divide it by four and that will tell you how many ounces of water she drank in each serving. And finally, for question number six, the value of the underlying digit. Remember, just write the underlying digit and replace everything behind it with zeros. If you have any questions, please let Mr. Reindell or I know, and hopefully you had a great lesson.